Today is all about modules, uh, particularly multi-protocol modules. I've been testing these three little guys, which are the uh, TMX5 by Your UAV or UA UAV. Uh, looks like that. Um, in fact, I won't bother messing around with the focus too much there. Uh, the XJT, which isn't a multi-protocol, it is Frysky only. I want to talk about that briefly as well, because uh, I have been testing that as well. And the Jumper JP4 in one. There are two versions of the Jumper multi-protocol module to my knowledge. I'll zoom in on this a little bit here and just tap the focus there. Uh, so this one here has got this little dial down the bottom here, uh, there, uh, and that dial allows you to switch between serial and PPM. Uh, the generic module does not have the dial, uh, so and you probably don't need the dial. There's no reason to run uh, PPM. There's also an iRange multi-protocol module. I've seen a lot of people on forums uh, having success with that. Uh, I don't have one, um, so I can't speak about it directly, uh, but I do understand the iRange works. Quick note on Crossfire, uh, because to get multi-protocol working on the Nirvana, you need at least the October release from 2019. Uh, there was a subsequent release in December that added AFHDS3. Uh, now, AFHDS3, at this point in time, there are no modules uh, that are available. There's there's one that I spoke to Flysky and they mentioned one, and I'll put a uh, I'll put some information on that, and I'll probably do a subsequent video on, on some of the updates coming out as well. Um, but A for HDS3, you will require an external module as well, uh, and the benefit there, the big benefit of of three. Um, so I don't have to say that acronym every time, uh, is basically greater range. Uh, I've heard with external power you can get up to 10 kilometers, whether that's true or not, we don't know because we haven't seen any videos or anything like that. Uh, where have I heard it from? Uh, a message from uh, Flysky, so directly, so I'll put a, a snapshot or something there as well. Um, just on Crossfire, uh, some people are having issues with the update, the October and December update uh, of Flysky uh, OpenTX with the Crossfire. I understand that that's the same issue that a lot of people are having with other transmitters, uh, where the solution, if you're having issues with Crossfire on the latest version of, of OpenTX on the Nirvana, uh, you can roll back the firmware on the Crossfire, um, something like 2.9, and then and then start working forward until you get the latest version that actually works, and um, it will work. So that much I do know, a lot of people are rocking it. So let's talk about these three modules here. Um, what I might do is just flick to some, some videos of these guys working, uh, and then I'll, I'll give you my final thoughts on which one I think you should get, or, or some things that you should know about anyway. Okay, I'll start off with the Jumper 4-in-1 multi-protocol. Uh, just let that get into focus there. Uh, looks like this. Uh, there's a generic version of this that doesn't have the dial. Purpose of the dial is that if you have this set to zero, it is in serial mode, which means uh, effectively you can access all the menu options, select the protocols, um, auto binds and everything from the transmitter menu itself. Now, um, the generic version doesn't have this dial, so I assume that it only works in uh, serial mode. Uh, if you select a particular number, then you're selecting a specific protocol uh, via PPM, which we don't really want. We want to use serial uh, to get better telemetry reads and so forth. But this is a list, and I'll probably put this on a separate page. Uh, here are all the available protocols, so there's quite a few. Um, and the concept of the dial is that if you are running PPM, which again, probably not advised to do, um, you select the actual uh, channel or the number that corresponds to the um, protocol that you want to adopt. Uh, and you have to use the buy button in that case there. In this case here, we're running on serial. Um, hopefully it's working, it has been working today for me. Uh, plug it in, it fits nicely. One thing you will notice is that this side here clicks in perfectly. This side here, there's a bit of a gap and a slight wobble, um, but it's relatively secure. Uh, it wouldn't be too hard to hack it to make that fit a bit nicer, maybe cut the plastic on the inside or so forth. I don't really want to dedicate that time and effort until I'm convinced that this is the, um, the one that works for me. So let's go ahead and power this up. And what should happen um, is that yeah, baby. <laughs> if we go back here, we should get a solid red light. So it should blink a few times and it should turn solid. Oh, that, that little hiccup blink is a good sign. There we go, it's solid. So that's good. Um, what I've found is that I've had to power cycle a few times to get it to work properly or consistently. Um, and that's it. So if I go into the menu, You'll see here another way of knowing it's worked. Scrolling down, um, pretty straightforward setup. Switch your internal RF off, uh, select multi-protocol, and then select the protocol you want. The status should give you a read. 
um, if it's not working it'll give you an error message there and just to show I've got this plugged in via a B-Brain light running on FrySky and so wait for the telemetry to kick in oh, I don't know why I didn't say telemetry recovered but there you go we're good the next multi-protocol module is the Your UAV or UR UAV. Get that into focus there. And this is the TMX5. Sorry, there we go. TMX5. So this one here doesn't have any dial or anything as such. Um, it should just work straight out of the box. And on the most part, it has. So what I'm going to do is just plug it in. Really easy to plug in. Unlike the uh, Jumper 4-in-1, clicks on both sides. So you can see there, uh, the fit is spot on. There we go. A um, little bit of play, but inconsequential really. So we'll power this one up. Yeah, baby! <laughs> now on this one here, similar story. Just it should flash, down. and then once the red light's gone, we're good to go. So uh, this is set, it's ready. I know now that if I go into my menu, um, I'll get a status, so here, similar setup, so we've got a status there as well, um, so I've got to read there. Again, error message if that's not working. Uh, very simple setup, switch internal off, multi-protocol on, select the protocol you want, in this case FrySky, uh, and then the rest I've left as is. I've got this um, running in 8 channel there as well, that's all you really need for what I want. Um, so this one here, I'm running the Emacs Freestyle, Tiny Hawk Freestyle probably an ill-advised thing to do but just to demonstrate here give it a couple of seconds we've got telemetry there and you can see I'll very quickly chop my fingers off here there we go it works one thing I've noticed with this particular module is and naturally it's not doing it now that I've got it on camera but um, often if I get too close to the actual uh, antenna if the quad's too close it cuts off telemetry it's not doing it now, um, Murphy's Law, but uh, that's something that, it's a behavior I haven't noticed in the other modules that I've tested, but I have noticed on this one, so now it's working fine. XJT, so this one here is specifically for the um, FrySky uh, protocol alone, uh, so it doesn't do multi-protocol. Um, you do need to change the little dip switches here. So I've got this set, one, uh, number one up, number two down is for D8 mode. Um, I haven't found any functional use for this button, uh, but let's go ahead and plug that in. So once again, this one here fits probably the best of the lot. Um, it fits perfectly on both sides and very little movement at all. So the XJT does fit the best out of the three. Um, if I now fire this up, I'll go straight into model select. And just to show you here, mode is XJT, obviously internal RF is off, so as opposed to multi-protocol, we've got XJT. I'm running it in D8, so channel one to channel eight. I haven't had to do anything else really to get it to work. Um, flicking across, we've got a red solid light and plugging in a FrySky Acro B. Telemetry picks up straight away. There you go. Now the other thing I wanted to quickly demonstrate is that if you had one of these little toy drones, and this is an old H8 I think it is from Ishin, um, the multi-protocols binds really easily with these so um, I'll just do that and you'll see there it is. All good. Uh, this, for the record, is by the Team X5. Focus. So, a quick look at the binding process. I have uh, this guy in binding mode. You can see the red flashing light. I'm running the Team X5 at the moment, uh, but the concept is the same for all. Just once you go into your model settings, set everything up, select bind, and we should see hit a little whistle, uh, change of behavior there, um, and that should be it. 
and you see it stopped binding so that's all good um, I haven't set this up for this module or whatnot in beta flight but that's it um, I may have referenced this in one of my videos, I made those videos quite some time ago. I have had issues with all three of these. My issues relate to my Nirvana. So if I do refer to some connectivity issues, they are really in relation to my transmitter uh, and not the fault of these modules. Uh, it's also worth noting that the modules may or may not necessarily come with the latest firmware on the modules. Um, and it can be a bit of a hassle to update the firmware on some of them as well. Um, so that might cause different behaviors in your experience with modules as well. And it's also worth noting that these modules will work on other transmitters as well. Uh, and again, the behavior there may differ depending on the OpenTX version or how they're wired or what voltage is going through to them. So, um, firstly, why do you need a multi-protocol module? Why would you bother? Uh, for me, um, really specifically, I've always wanted newbie drone, uh, whoops, uh, as well as love the Emacs Tiny Hawk series. Um, previously, I'd wire in my own receiver to those uh, because they don't come in. Neither Numi Drone nor uh, Emacs make Fly Sky or Tiny Hawk series at the very least don't come out in Fly Sky, uh, and they're some of the best quads going around at the moment, I think. Um, micro quads, anyway. So you want multi protocol so you can run things like Fly Sky. Uh, so why not just get an XJT? Uh, in that case, there, I don't really recommend this anymore. Prior to October, when there was no multi-protocol support, um, there's probably good reason I need to, it's rattling because I need to tighten it. There's probably good reason um, to buy one of these so you can run those, those quads I, I spoke about. Um, the power demand for this thing here is much stronger than these guys here. If you've got an early version of Nirvana, this may not work and you can identify its flaws, let's say, uh, from a repeated cycle of beeping and telemetry lost, telemetry recovered, and that's simply because the voltage coming out of the Nirvana uh, wasn't enough uh, to power the XJT sufficiently. Um, newer models, uh, they've changed, I think they changed the resistor to allow more power to go through, um, but it's a bit of a gamble if you're buying a Nirvana and you don't know 100%. If you do have a Nirvana that doesn't power the XJT enough, there's a couple of things to my knowledge that you can do. One is to change the actual resistor. There's lots of stuff on the internet on that. Um, change an actual resistor to allow for more voltage. Uh, it is a very technical soldering job. You've got to pull apart the uh, Nirvana. Um, the actual resistor itself is half the size of a grain of rice, so you can't really do it with a soldering iron. Uh, you really need a, a hot air gun, hot air workstation, I can't remember what they're called. Um, and it's a bit of stuffing around, so you kind of need to know what you're doing. The alternative is you may be able to find a main board and replace the main board. I was able to find one from, I think it was FBV Faster here in Australia. Uh, not that easy to find. I paid about, I think, 50 Aussie for it. So let's say, what, 35, 40 US. Um, and you can change the main board uh, and that will solve that problem as well. That said, I don't really see any reason to get the XJT now there's multi-protocol support. I assume that given the power consumptions of this thing, I would get a far greater range. Um, I have not noticed any difference in range between any of these. I don't think range is a factor with any of these. I'm only trying on micro quads. Um, I, I like mainly fly mi micro quads, so um, <clears throat> anything bigger than you want to get something like Crossfire or something like that anyway. So um, I'm going to say a big no to the XJT. Um, for those reasons, for the reasons that you might risk the power situation, um, there's it's about the same amount of money and no real additional range um, as these guys, but these guys here will give you access to that many different protocols. Uh, it's not funny. So um, of these two, if I were to directly compare these two, uh, I have to say I'm running the TMX5 um, quite a lot. Um, I've chosen this. I, Really, if I were you, whichever one you can find cheaper, look at the RH, look at the generic version, just get the cheaper one. They all do the same thing. Some nuances that are different. Um, the TMX5 will fit perfectly into your Nirvana. Uh, the JP4 in one, you'll need, to, and I believe it's the exact same situation with the generic uh, jumper uh, module as well. Um, the side with the pins on it won't click in all the way. It's a bit annoying. Uh, you could probably hack at it, you know, if you're going to save 10 bucks or 20 bucks and find it cheaper, then you could probably hack at it um, and fix that and, and that's fine. Um, you don't really even need to fix it, it's just if you've got OCD or something, um, because it doesn't really fall out, it doesn't really impact anything, so uh, it's more that it doesn't click in all the way. 
One thing I notice on the TMX5 that doesn't occur for the other two is that if I select a model on my Nirvana that is fly sky only, um, it, the LED is still flash, so it's still getting power to this. So maybe that's the firmware on the module, I don't know. Uh, I would have thought that was controlled by the actual transmitter itself, but uh, obviously not. Uh, whereas with the jumper and the uh, XJT, the second you switch away from uh, that external uh, module, it will power down the module. Or you'll see that no lights are flashing or anything there as well. Um, the other big reason I've gone with the TMX5 is that I found the binding process to be consistently reliable. Uh, I did get some hiccups with this here. So the jumper, I had some hiccups where um, it, it just wouldn't go into bind mode or it would behave inconsistently. It would work um, and it Maybe that's just my transmitter and the issues I'm having, um, but never had that problem with the TMX5, did have it with the jumper. So I'm leaning towards the TMX5. I'm clearly not endorsed by anyone, um, so this is completely unbiased. Get whichever one's cheaper. Lean towards the TMX5 if you care about the fit, etc. Um, I referenced, I think, in the video that sometimes when I get close to the transmitter with a craft on the TMX5, it loses telemetry. Uh, that in the last month of flying, I haven't had that happen. Um, and it's only ever happened kind of in the workshop environment or a desk environment. Definitely that one there. Uh, in closing, or the, the last thing I'll probably say is that as far as um, range goes, uh, and again, reminder, only flight around micros, um, found them the same, didn't have really any issues with range. You know, if you want to fly a micro, as I like flying a micro, uh, really, I only fly within one or two hundred meters anyway. I don't really have access to that much space. So I'll, I'll cut now to some flight footage. I'll try, I'll just keep it short, just to give you an idea of what the range is like. Uh, the quad I'm using in the flight footage is the uh, Tiny Hawk Freestyle, which is probably my favorite quad at the moment. Um, and it's running the TMX5. So you can see, you'll be able to see how far I get. And I'll probably add some commentary there. Thank you, see you soon. All right, quick video just showing the range of the TMX5, which is pretty much the same as the XJT and um, the Jump 4 in one uh, using a Tiny Hawk Freestyle, which has a pretty poor VTX. I intend on swapping that, uh, but you can see I can get some half days in distance. Um, I'm sitting here on this veranda here. Sadly, this is not my house. We're staying at a, an Airbnb. I wish I had a backyard this size and access to a park, but anyway, um, keep your eye on the RSSI again, uh, it's really relatively healthy. I usually fly down to 30. Um, it's really the VTX that's prevented me from flying any further. I hope to rectify that shortly. Um, I go around this tree and take it out a little bit wide. I'm running Skyzone V2s with a uh, Bandicoot patch linear uh, antenna as well as a, a just a standard rubber ducky dipole antenna because I have a, a whip on the, um, on the Tiny Hawk Freestyle. Uh, that's pretty much it.